looking for effective and lasting ways to be happy in 2020 and any other year? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you five ways that have helped me on my journey. And I know that will help you as well. So stay right here. <laughs> Pretending to be happy, but you're really not. Hey, sugar, it's your girl Nia. Thank you for joining me today. If you are a first time viewer or a new subscriber, welcome. Thank you so much. I hope you love my channel. I hope you like the video. Please subscribe while you're here right now. Come on, let's do it right now because subscribing helps my videos to get all over the place. People need to be encouraged. People need to be shown how beautiful they are, how beautiful life is, so that they can live it to the fullest, right? So go ahead and subscribe right now. Oh, and make sure you watch the video all the way through because point number one is truly the gift that keeps on giving when it comes to happiness. Okay, hey, it's the first of the year. It's a new start. We're excited. We just want to go at it gung-ho, right? But what happens when we fall short of all the goals we plan for ourselves? Do we just shelf our happiness and we figure, okay, well, we didn't meet our goals. That's it. I'm not going to try anymore. I'm just going to be this unhappy piece of flesh and just try again next year. Is that what we do? Is that the mindset we take on? Hopefully not. What is real happiness exactly? Is it something that comes from you're hitting the lottery or you're getting that guy or that girl you've always wanted or the perfect job or the perfect physique or whatever? Is that what real happiness is? No. Now, all of these things are great. They're great accomplishments. I am never hating on any of those, okay, especially the physique part. But there's one thing that separates real lasting happiness, as I mentioned earlier in the video, from happiness from something that occurs. Genuine happiness, genuine joy, something that people or circumstances just can't touch. You may be down for a little while, sure, because you're only human, but it's not gonna debilitate you completely. Uh, whereas with these other things I mentioned, as wonderful as they are, these things are fleeting. They're, you know, they can be taken away. Now don't misunderstand, I'm not trying to say that life is gonna be so perfect in your world all the time. Things are gonna be so great, you're gonna be floating on a cloud all the time. But I can guarantee you that application of these five things, at least these five things, will make a difference in your happiness level. So come on, let's get started with tip number five. Boy, this right here, this right here. I've got a little exercise for you. I want you to close your eyes just for a second. Close your eyes, think back to a time in your past where something really, really painful happened to you. Some betrayal, some heartbreak, disappointment. Just close your eyes and think about that for a second or two. Didn't feel good, did it? Didn't feel good at all. That's exactly what I want you to work on letting go of. You see, there's no way that we can ever be happy, go forward in our lives when we're holding on to the past. That was my biggest hurdle, letting things go, leaving things where they were. A lot of times we'll block our own blessings, we'll block our own happiness because another door back there is left open. And so because that door is still left open, then the door that's in front of us doesn't have an opportunity to even start to open. So even if you haven't totally succeeded on letting go of things of your past, things that were painful, be resolved to continually work at picking those things off layer by layer. Even if you never totally arrive, just trying more and more every day will lead to greater contentment with your life today. Because otherwise, life is going to continue to pass you by. You're going to stay stuck in the past and miserable because you never close that chapter. Learn from it. Even though the things that happened did happen, even if they're your fault, they happen. And let those things teach you and propel you to being better for your future because it's waiting for you, but just in a different format. Imagine yourself on a hike, right? And most, for most hikers and hiking trips, we take a backpack, right? And we take other supplies, maybe bottles of water, or extra shoes, or a jacket, or a hat, or a flashlight. Just a bunch of stuff to help us along with our hike. Well, when we re reach the destination we're trying to get to, and we start to take everything off, like that backpack, which is typically the heaviest, and all the other things, you feel such an amazing sense of relief 
it's just unbelievable. You feel like you've accomplished something, your body thanks you, you feel better, you can relax, you can be at peace. That is really what it feels like when you let the past go. And I mean, you can't help but to be happier because those things do what? They weigh you down, right? And we that's not the, pur the purpose of our best lives. Our best lives aren't living weighted down, bogged down, burdened lives. We want to be free, happy. We want to be at peace, to be calm and completely content with our lot, where we are, what we've been blessed with. So look to the past, learn from it, but just don't stay in it. Tip number four. Making your trip for one could be one of the best things that you can do in the way of your own happiness. Not having to worry about the next person or the next group's preferences not jiving with yours. So you don't have to worry about doing things like this. It will bring you so much joy meeting different people from all walks of life going places that you've never gone to before, looking back and saying, I did that, I did that on my own. And just it just brings you so much happiness, just revisiting and replaying those moments in your head when you took a trip here or you took a trip there and looking at pictures. Every feeling and emotion that you felt when you were at those places always come back and they just only make you feel better every time you look at those things again. And you know, traveling alone is cheaper. You want to stay in a day or so if you want to eat uh, a bologna sandwich instead of a full meal so you don't have to feel like you're impressing your other friends. You can eat a bologna sandwich or some ramen noodles. <laughs> it's really a big deal to be able to look back, especially when you go on trips out of the country. I have yet to get out of the country, but I have taken several long distance vacays by myself. But just imagine just the things that you accomplished. Like, I did that. No fear. And you know, from what I experienced in my during my solo travels, there are more people traveling solo than you would really even imagine, really. A lot of us are traveling solo, and it's all good. It's really not as dangerous as you think it is. Meeting these different people, different souls from different parts of the world, and you end up making new friends. It's a beautiful thing, a lot to be happy about there. Another thing I found too, is I learned more about myself. I didn't realize how much I liked certain environments. I didn't realize how much I liked my solitude. Um, there's a lot of things that you will come to learn about yourself traveling solo, but you're at peace with yourself. You get to reflect more, even if it's just a staycay right, where you're staying in the same city or a nearby city, and perhaps just going to a hotel or something for a day or so. It gets you rejuvenated. So go ahead, give those solo vacays a try. Now, let's move on to tip number three. I can't say to you, get eight hours. I can't say, say seven hours or six or whatever. I can only say that you should get enough sleep that you need on a daily basis. Consider how you work, consider your obligations, if you're a parent, um, things you're involved in, consider all those things and really start to rest as often as you can. Because what happens is, like in my case, um, you'll get so fatigued where you're moody, your, your moods are, are swinging all over the place, you're not performing at your best level. But getting enough, enough sleep helps our bodies to heal. Our body is in cleansing mode. A lot of good stuff happens when you're asleep. So then when you wake up, your body is continuing the process, but you'll feel re rested. Things are purged overnight. You'll kind of be at your best as opposed to just being slothful and groggy and, oh my God, I have to have 45 ounces of coffee. About that. I don't care how many you know those or caffeine or if you are not well rested, it will show. Try to get more sleep. It does the body good. It does the whole world good. And it's best for your own happiness. And one disturbing thing that I did not know um, is that sleep deprivation contributes to major diseases like heart disease, diabetes, obesity, things of this nature. So yeah, we don't wanna take risks that we don't have to take by just not going to sleep at night. Whatever reason, you really can't get the optimal sleep that you need, but try your best, even if that means, in my opinion, 
getting some type of supplement, natural that is, to assist you in getting to sleep. And two, when you think about lack of sleep, it could be the most beautiful day outside, it could be a beautiful event going on, you are not going to be at your, at your best. You're not gonna be optimal, you know what I mean? Especially when it comes to children. You may wanna play with the little ones, but you're so tired, uh, and it's just not, a great way to go for anybody on any given day when you are just so exhausted. You can't even think clearly and, and function at optimal as you could or as optimal, believe. Boy, maybe I need to get some sleep. Look at my eyes. I think I am sleepy. But yeah, you just really, really want to make sleep a priority because it's very, very important. And speaking of priorities, let's step on into tip number two. We must love ourselves enough to care for ourselves as best as we can, right? This means we have to eat better. That's a passion of mine, even though I fall off every blue moon, but we must learn to eat better, make better eating habits, eating more plant-based foods, because our bodies are from the earth. There's a saying, you are what you eat, and it's really true. Um, our bodies need to assimilate with the minerals that they're made out of, right? So we have to, that's why it's so important to eat plant-based foods because we are organic and plants are living things. We need to make sure that we're learning, educating ourselves on what our bodies need, um, how our bodies function best, what will make us feel our best, what will keep us well. So that's gotta be like a mega priority for us when it comes to our own happiness because health is wealth. You can't really be happy if you're not that healthy, right? And also, making sure we try to get some kind of exercise. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the traditional workout. I mean, I, I may do a walk here and there or the elliptical or dancing or something, but I'm not like one of those, let's join the gym, let's, because I, I, don't, I don't stay committed to that. I know that. Whatever it is that you know that you can stay committed to, not saying it's even got to be every day, but just some degree of something that will help your body to remain at its optimal health, you know? Eat yourself up, don't knock yourself down, don't throw yourself away when you mess up. We all mess up. Forgive yourself, still love yourself. Don't, you know, give up like other people that don't really care for you would do to you. Don't do that to yourself. Prioritize our personal growth and our self-improvement. There's nothing wrong with watching podcasts or listening to podcasts or listening to this video or any other light video that's focused on our best living, um, our healthiest state. You need to always be in the place where where wellness is discussed or where however we can live optimally is what we should be going for. So that's what I had to put in place for myself um, because I wasn't taking very good care of my body and ran into some health issues, which I still battle, but I'm doing much better because of A, knowledge and education. B, to love myself again like I really never had. Then C, putting these things I've learned into practice. When you change your mindset like that, it's not that you've become selfish or that you could care less about people in general. It's just almost like a protection for your own well-being, self-improvement, self-growth self-love you gotta do that otherwise you will never I don't care how much you pretend you will never be genuinely that happy person that you're trying to be which is why you're looking at this video obtaining genuine lasting happiness is an intentional feat it's nothing you can do fly by night it's nothing you can do haphazardly it's got to be intentional and vigorously approached if you want to get there and stay there. It's a state of mind, it's a choice, and I guess I just chosen to, to do that because I've spent most of my adult life almost in the opposite. Though I carried a smile, I wasn't really as happy as I came off to be. So again, remember, make yourself self-growth a priority. Now this brings us to our last tip, tip number one. Now, I'm in no way trying to impose any of my religious beliefs or, actually, I don't have religious beliefs. I have spiritual, biblical beliefs. Again, I'm not trying to impose any of my beliefs on any one of, of you at all, but I would suggest to pray 
and pray again and pray some more. Our Heavenly Father cares about us more than we could ever imagine. Every little thing that concerns us concerns Him. As humans, we tend to look at God as such an awesome, amazing entity that the things that matter to us and occur with, with us in our lives and um, the thoughts we have, the jumbling of our lives, the failures, the everything, we tend to think that God's not interested in those things. But really, the total opposite is true. He's very interested. The Bible even tells us that the hairs of our head are numbered. So you can't, I mean, if, if that's not interested, I don't know what it is. Because as much as I love my children, I am not sitting around numbering your heads. Mm -mm, boo -boo. The world is in such a state of chaos, not just with this whole Trump issue. It happened well before that. But the world is in such a... A terrible state the love that's lacking that was prophesied in the Bible people are not sticking together they're not loyal anymore um, people are just it's just an unhealthy and unhappy way for the world right now when we go to our father with things that concern us and, and the way our lives are going the things that we would desire he does hear us we give him that time we show him that he matters above all we're not using him as some genie of sorts but just really as a really really good amazing loving holy concerned father who's ever present who's always there for us when we pray and we talk to him a lot we'll start to know when he's talking to us when he's moving on our behalves, when he's guiding us, even when things are rough. Sometimes we have to go around certain avenues to get to happiness way, if you will. But it's, it's just a feeling of overwhelming joy knowing that the almighty God of the universe hears me, little old me, you too. If that isn't the greatest source of joy, then I don't know whatever will be. Keep setting your goals, keep writing things down, Keep dreaming, keep fantasizing, keep praying, keep talking to God. He will make things crystal clear for you. He won't steer you wrong. From experience, I have had people put in my path. My first, and I, you guys that follow me, have been following me for a while, you know of my trip to California, the couple trips I made to California, all by myself for the first time ever in my life. Like, who does that in this, with the state of the world being the way it is now? Who does that in these dangerous times? I did it, and I did it on a wing and a prayer, like they always say. It's just such a testament to his listening ear, to his love, to his concern. There's never a bad time to pray. You never can run out of prayers. God can never get tired on you and say, hang on to that, I'll see you tomorrow. Or can you call this cherub and ask him because I'm kind of busy. No, take everything to him in prayer. I can guarantee you that your greatest source of happiness will be so much for watching the video i hope you got a lot out of it i put my soul and my heart into my videos so i'm really really looking forward to hearing back from you in the comments let me know what it is that you plan to put into practice to make your life experience that much better in 2020 and beyond what is it that you would suggest to me for me to talk about in the next video in the way of happiness i look forward to hearing from you god bless you i'll see you next time